just a steep slope to begin with. So, we need a method so that we can name any organic molecule. Regardless of how many rings or chains and wiggly bits there are of the molecule, like a big fat heavy caterpillar. We're talking about caterpillars. When we think about the name of a compound, we break it up into three chunks. We've got the suffix, the parent, and the prefix to the molecule. And as we build up the name of the molecule, we're actually going to start backwards in the molecule. So we start from the, the ground and work our way up. So for the suffix to the molecule, we're looking to the functional group in this molecule. The name ending. The name ending will be specific to the kind of functional group. We only have to worry about one kind of functional group in this chapter, the alkanes. So for the alkanes, the suffix we were talking about is always going to finish in A N E. At the very end of the name is A N E, then it's an alkane molecule with just carbon to carbon and carbon to hydrogen bond. For the parent chain, the core of the molecule, We are looking at that line angle formula and we are looking at the longest, the absolute longest continuous chain of carbons without doubling back on ourselves. So look at your molecule and decide from one tip to another where the longest possible chain is. So for the three examples we have here, the longest possible chain for the first one is from here to here, eight carbons long. So that's based on the octane we talked about for the first ten named alkanes. For this one, it's slightly more tricky, from here to here is the longest continuing snaking chain of carbons. And that's 10 carbons long, so it's based on decade. And for the last one, the longest continuous chain of carbons, I've tried to do it in my notes in a slightly thicker bowl than the rest of the molecule. The longest continuous chain in this case is 9 carbons long. The core of the name should represent the core of the molecule. So if we looked at that molecule, we numbered the longest continuous chain of carbons in each of those molecules. Number that longest continuous chain. So now we're looking at the carbons which we didn't touch in that original core chain. These carbons make up the branches. And we're going to treat each branch as if it was a molecule in its own right. So we'll count those carbons in the branch as if it was a separate molecule. And name it with the same system we use for the core. One carbon in the branch is based on methane. We change the name and we take off the A and E and put on a YL instead. So we can distinguish a branch from the core trunk. It's a YL ending, then that's one of the branches. If the branch had two carbons in the main chain, of course that was based on ethane, the second alkane. So ethane becomes ethyl or ethyl in some American say. That sounds like my art. Four carbons in the branch based on butane. Take off the A and E ending and change it to YL. So it's a butyl branch in the molecule. So the name of the branch is based on the parent alkane again.
beware of multiple drifts on the molecule, which are the same length. If we have two branches, which are both one half long, they're both methyl branches. So we're going to be talking about this molecule having dimethyl branching. Also our one, two, three branches. We talked about having trimethyl branches on this molecule. Okay? So the last piece of the puzzle is that when we include them in the name, we'll include them in alphabetical order, not numerical order. So even though the first branch of the molecule is on the chlorine, not the bromine, which is a carbon-3, we'll list the branches in alphabetical order. So we'll list B for bromo before we list C for chlorine. So our three examples in the previous page. And our last thing to look at this morning. Final names look like this. Again, the practice will bring us home. Remember, the core molecule was eight carbons long. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We list them alphabetically, so E for ethyl, for M for methyl. And it's a branch, an ethyl branch in carbon 4 and a methyl branch in carbon 5. Using this system allows us to look at a name and rebuild and draw an actual line angle formula based on that name. The name is fully descriptive of the molecule. So we'll stop there before people's heads explode. And that's